Hi, this is Jake Crone in Fergus Falls. I'm standing in front of our public library, which has recently received a change to its on-street parking. An additional handicapped parking spot has been added to the front of the building, when before the only handicapped spots were a considerable distance away. Along with this, fresh yellow paint has been laid down on the curbs on both sides of the street. This is a change from the previous parking arrangements, which allowed parking on the far side, but not on the side closest to the library. In looking at the land around the library, one can see that parking is not really an issue. There are two pretty good sized lots, and the library is well located to attract a considerable amount of walkers and bikers. So I mourn less the loss of parking spaces than I do the traffic calming effect that the parked cars provide. This street is sufficiently wide enough to support parking on both sides, while still allowing two cars to pass side by side. Not that it happens that much. But what does happen quite often are drivers using this street as a high-speed shortcut between two roads that lead to and away from our downtown. I live farther up this street and witness this every day. Removing obstacles in the form of parked cars, which was done ostensibly in the name of safety, is actually counterproductive, as it gives drivers a visual cue that their path is sufficiently unhindered and open for high-speed travel. This, I hope, is not the message that we want to be sending in an area that sees much foot traffic, particularly from the very young and elderly. My suggestion to the city is to rethink this change and consider other users of the space as well. This car-first approach leads to a less appealing and possibly more dangerous situation. Though it's not immediately intuitive that more cars on the street, not less, would lead to a better pedestrian environment, it's the fact that these cars are stationary and acting as traffic calming devices that makes all the difference.